Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Our Kids Play Hockey. We want to let you know that we have once again been honored with a nomination for the Hockey Podcast of the Year via the Sports Podcasting Awards. And all you need to do to help us is go to OurKidsPlayHockey.com and click on the Vote Now button. It asks you a couple questions. You're in and you're out, and you have voted for us for Hockey Podcast of the Year. I want to thank you all for being a wonderful, wonderful audience and helping us get to this stature of hockey podcasting because we've done it as a family, as the hockey friends and families around the world. Thanks so much and enjoy this episode of Our Kids Play Hockey. Hello, hockey friends and families around the world. Welcome to another edition of Our Kids Play Hockey, another great edition with a guest. We're joined today by Jay DeMarco. Jay is the creator of the comic strip, comic strip excuse me, Small Saves, which follows the antics of a little youth goalie of the same name. The cartoon, which debuted in 1991, regularly appears in USA Hockey Magazine, the Independent Sporting News, Inside Hockey, and of course, smallsaves.com. In addition to the above, Small Saves collections are also available for purchase on amazon.com if you're looking for a gift for the goalie in your life. Jay started playing hockey as a goalie at the age of five and still plays to this day. His hockey journey included stops in Watertown, Massachusetts for prep hockey and three years of semi-professional play in the South Florida Hockey League. In addition to small saves, Jay is also uh, working in a nursing home, does silk screening, and is known to help at his local rink, of course, sharpening skates. Jay is a passionate fan of goaltending. I don't want that to be missed. And of hockey, of course. And we are pleased to have him here today. Jay, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. So, Jay, the obvious first question uh, is tell us the story of how Small Saves was born uh, and the journey and then the passion project of it. How did that all come to life? Well, I've always I've been a goalie since age five. So um, I just have a passion for goaltending in general. And I wanted to be a syndicated cartoonist and I developed a comic strip called Sports Kids. The only problem with it was is that Hockey is the only sport I know. So <laughs> I was trying to write about football and baseball. And I, I really, and I've seen them on TV, but I never played it or followed it. So the comic strip really didn't go too far. But out of it came small saves. And I noticed I kept leaning towards drawing him. So in 1991, I just started sketching them and putting them together. And, um, you know, um, and then here we are. <laughs> right. Right. Well, you've been doing it a long time. Look, you're clearly passionate about it. Uh, oh, I again, it. Yeah. You, you've spoken to, to, I think, everybody on this panel at least once about it. And, mm -hmm. you know, you really love what you do. So, you know, you said it started in 1991, right? You even sent us some examples, which our producer, Caitlin, will make sure that go up on the screen here while we're talking. They're probably happening right now. Thank you. And uh, yeah, let me ask you this. What have been some of your favorite small saves you've created and why? And you have a lot of a huge library to go on here. Yeah, there's, there's quite a bit. Um, yeah, I, I be honest, I kind of, I love them all. They Good all answer. something special <laughs> to me. Um, right. Yeah, I just, uh, I, I, I think the ones when he's in the net pulling antics and shenanigans. I think those are the ones that I, I kind of get an extra kick out of. Right. So um, when he's just being a goalie, like any other goalie that existed in the history yeah. of goaltending. Yeah. Uh, Jay, this character that you created, um, you know, he's quirky, right? So, yeah. and a lot of what we think of as oddities of goalies yeah. kind of comes out in this character, right? Yeah, it, it, it's <laughs> funny. Um, I never noticed it too much because as a goalie, that's kind of like how I see life. But when people read it, they're like, oh, geez, that's, um, yeah, he's a little different. different. Yeah. You know, you know, one, one of the ones you sent us that I loved um, was the one of, of small saves mentally preparing and seeing himself as these different things, a dragon and, 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 you know, it's yeah. funny. Cause I could, I, I could relate to that as a, as being a Ford most of my life. Um, and, you know, it's funny when I was seeing that one again, because, you know, I know you're a big, you grew up as a Peanuts fan, yes. um, and, you know, obviously loving all of those, those newspaper uh, comic strips. And, you know, in, in recent years, that's something that, that has, has changed a bit. I'll say that. I mean, they still yeah. exist, but, it, you know, people don't read newspapers as regularly, no. No. but I loved the feeling of feeling like I was in the comic strips again. That was something when I was a kid, we used to pull the comic strips out and read them. That was a fun part of the day. 
Um, and I, I just love that you have continued to keep that alive. And, and one of the things for those of you who don't know, like Jay, Jay refuses to allow newspapers not being mainstream to stop him from doing this. And I love that about you, man, because you, you really do love what you're doing. Yeah, I do. You know, um, so I got to ask this too, you know, in, a, in an article I was reading about you, I saw that one fan of yours got a tattoo of small saves on his back. Yeah, it's actually becoming quite the norm now. At least once a month, someone says, may I put him on my arm or I, you know, I need a tattoo for my leg and I want to put him on it. And, I, and the goalies will say, you know, I want him on my mask. And, and um, yeah, so I say, say, well, I must be doing something right. If people, right. To tattoo it, that's pretty personal. That's That's forever. On you, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a little forever. That's going to the yeah. grave with them. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty big testament. Again, for those of you who haven't read Small Saves, I mean, that's what people think of this 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 comic strip. Thank you. Um, do you have any other great stories from fans outside of tattoo, or like you said, the goalie helmets, where someone's maybe contacted you and said, like, well, this is why I'm doing it. Uh, anything fun with that? Um, I do get some letters. Um, no, they just basically say I really love the cartoon and, um. I do hear from some parents saying, you know, my, my child, you know, doesn't like to read or anything, but he falls asleep with your book every night and he That's won't cool. let it go. Um, I've had parents tell me that their kids are now wearing their goalie mask to the breakfast table. <laughs> um, and <laughs> you must draw inspiration for that. Oh, too, yeah. For that. I was yeah. going to say, yeah. <laughs> Uh, rumor also has it that in one of the comic strips, a, a uh, reporter appears that looks like one of my co-hosts here. Yes. <laughs> and, and I'll give you a clue. It's not Mike. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, we collaborated on that one. Um, you know, I do a lot of school visits because I have children's books, too. And um, Jay and I were talking about our kids' books. And I, I mentioned to Jay, I'm going to bring small saves in with me on one of my classroom visits. And he was thrilled about that. And then he got inspired. He goes, what if I did a cartoon based on Sophia and Eddie the Puck Hog? And I was so thrilled. And um, I, he, he gave me a huge drawing of it, uh, mm. large enough where I didn't even have to, you know, go around the classroom to show everybody. It was yeah. big enough where you could just see it was like life size. Mm -hmm. um, he came up with this great drawing and the punchline was great with Eddie. Um, oh, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you tell everybody? Because I want to know how you got inspired to to oh. share that story. Well, actually, you've appeared in a couple of cartoons. <laughs> um, there's one I sent yesterday. You'll get you'll get to see it probably in a moment. But the one with Eddie was just um, just from looking at the notes you gave me and and the um, the values that you were trying to instill into your readers. And I said, wow, that's a that's a great great idea so it just kind of came naturally and i just wrote it down and and um and there it is and uh, i love that you um you, know, you read it to the class and you filmed it so thank you so much oh you're welcome yeah but yeah and that's the thing about small saves is small saves teaches kids some really good life lessons oh, outside you. of the hockey ring which thank i you. love oh thank you so much you know, uh, going on that article I read, you know, one, one of the other cool things. So, so now, Jay, you're joined by by other writers on here. Oh, awesome. um, and and uh, Mike, I, I, I'm not leaving you out. Don't worry. Yeah, but we'll, we'll include you in this episode somehow in a moment. But no, <laughs> you know, look, look, Christy and I are both writers. And, you know, one of the things I really related with, and actually, Mike, you'll relate to this too, just being a coach, right? Because this happens when you're trying to draw plays and stuff sometimes. But I love that you wrote about how you'll sit down, you'll get ready to make a strip and, and, yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to make one. And then an hour later, nothing's happened. Nothing. Uh, and uh, any writer has experienced that. <laughs> Where like, yeah. Today's the day I write six chapters. And, <laughs> you know, four days later, you have the. Yeah. I actually <laughs> joined a, a Facebook group for writer, writer's block. Really? <laughs> yeah, I just, joined it. Just to vent. <laughs> just to prompt you. And, and, yeah, a little and, and, yeah. bit. Writer's block is horrible. You, you know, uh, again, for those of you listening, one of the things I love about our show is obviously we talk about the game. So parents, by the way, and coaches that are listening to this, uh, and we're going to, uh, Jay, I'm going to ask you about this in a minute too. There are so many ways you can experience this game outside playing it. It all comes back oh, to yeah. playing it, but that's why I love doing these episodes because it shows and showcases other people and what they do in the game. But one of the things I loved about this, this little article I was reading, it's totally related to it was obviously the writer's block. And most writers yeah. know that, uh, if you, you know, you're probably writing less time than when you're not, meaning that like you probably have more block than you do 
when you can actually yeah. create something. But what you said that I totally related to was you'll sit there and then nothing will happen. Then you'll go play yeah. and just the, the ideas will start coming, Stuff right? Flying left and right. Yeah. Right. And, and, you know, a lot of that's like, you know, you're experiencing things by doing it, but uh, I wanted to ask, you know, the most frustrating part for me with that is that happens to me. And I'm like, oh, I can't jump off the ice and go write this down yeah, right now. Exactly. You got to like yeah. kind of store it in your memory bags. And I have yeah. before though, I wanted to get see if you do this. Yeah. Uh, Christy, this will make you laugh. I have after a game or a practice, like run to the snack bar, got a napkin and start writing stuff down. And uh, Mike, this will make you laugh. People are like, you writing up some plays? I'm like, yeah, yeah, the plays all right. I'm writing, <laughs> yeah. writing, writing narratives for character I just thought of. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, James, walk us through that process of just, you know, how the ideas come. And I'm sure sometimes they come faster than others. Oh, they, they come out of the blue. So I, for everyone that, um, you know, say they want to get into cartooning or just writing, always keep a notebook with you in right. those tiny little pocket notebooks and a couple of pens and have them with you at all times. A lot um, of these, I, I have a lot of these around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I put them, I have it next to my bed at night. I might wake up and I have an idea. I write it down. Can't develop it because you know, it's like, it's just raw, but I'll write that down or I'll be driving in the car and I say, Oh my God, I got an idea. And I just pull over into a parking lot and, and I write it down. And um, um, so even when I'm at work, sometimes they'll say, oh, my God, I got a great idea. And I kind of sneak off to the side and write it. And a good friend, a friend of mine, his name is Mark Parisi. He draws off the mark. He said the funniest thing to me, he says, uh, well, it's a good thing you're not a surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This guy's heart's beating. Oh, wait, I have I'd an be, idea. I'd I'll be, be running right off. There. Yeah, I'd be running off. Excuse me, guys. I'll be right back and writing a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> no that works I out a, i have a question about goalies jay um i, I think they're really misunderstood right it's so a little bit yeah break some of the myths about goalies that you know people don't get you a lot of times and, yeah. and small saves tries to help yeah boost the uh knowledge about hockey and kind of the myths yeah. and, the, and the mystery is around goalies. yeah so share some things about goalies that you think people misunderstand about you I, I think they always say, well, you know, the goalie is a little bit wacky, a little bit crazy, a little bit uh, different <laughs> than, than the rest. And we kind of have to be because when we're on the ice, it's, you know, we're not playing against five guys. We're actually playing against 10 because <laughs> your own guy can tip it in the net or whatnot. So you kind of stay a little guarded and that area is yours and you you just... Um, you're kind of like in your own world a little bit, like you're watching the game and, and, you know, you're part of the play, but you're also like, okay, my defenseman can go to swat at it and he's going to redirect it over my shoulder or, or whatnot. So we, we tend to, um, you know, be to ourselves. And I had a friend of mine um, who said to me once, and she plays too. She's a great defenseman. Um, and she says, uh, you know, he's, you know, goalies are crazy or, what not? And I said, well, I'll have you know, I'm the most sanest person you'll ever meet. And she said, well, the one, the goalies who think they're sane are probably the craziest. Of <laughs> <laughs> I think that kind of sums it right up. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, you're making me think of a funny story. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I never was able to figure this out. For some reason, every team I've ever been on, I'm always friends with the goalies. And I remember a few years into my playing years, I'm like, wait, what's this say about me? <laughs> that I'm always, I'm always, yeah, because yeah, the goalies are a little off. I think I was a little bit off too. Yeah. And then I remember at one point, I remember thinking like, maybe I should have been a goalie this is, because I'm, I was always friends with the goalies, right? Yeah. Um, and, and again, this is a lot of different goalies. It's not like the same goalie every year I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Um, but I, I think I got a glimpse into that because it's it, that, that game is a different speed for you. Yeah. Um, and then obviously the responsibility is different. And um, I forgot who famously said it, but, but, you know, anybody who's trying to take a 90 mile per hour slap shot at the head, it's okay with that. Something's off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, the Gumper says, I think his, the, the Gump Worsley had, he was a great goalie for Montreal, New York and, and, and Minnesota. He had said, um, you don't have to be crazy to be a goalie, but it helps. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That was his right. famous quote. <laughs> and then I, I forgot what other goal you had said that quote that how would you feel that if every time you made a mistake, a red light showed up and 20,000 people started cheering or yelling at you? Yeah, that, would, that was a good one as well. Um, I actually have a, a um, 
I was going to say, we got to bring Mike in this conversation. He's being way too Do we have to? I mean, he looks yeah. like he's having a good time just watching this. Episode. No, I love it. Listen, I come, from, <laughs> I, I, I come from a family of illustrators. My father's a professional illustrator. Obviously, my, my brother is a professional illustrator. So I think. I didn't know so that, I, Mike. I think, I, yeah, yeah. You've he's been a, quiet yeah. this whole time, and that's Whoa. what's going on in your family. So I, but I, but I, I can really, I, I, I can really, uh, you know, the writer's block part is is funny because you know I think when you're a, an artist like you, Jay, and 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 it looks easy, right? Like from a lay person, like, hey, Jay, could you just draw me up a, you know, a quick caricature yeah. of of this? And I, I do that to my father all the time, who's done, you know, work for the NHL and done work for the Islanders and the Rangers and. And, and so when he does, when I'm asking him like, Hey, can you just draw a real quick picture of the kids for me and draw a little like funny caricature? He's like, well, I can't just draw it. Like that, that it needs to come to me. Like sometimes it's, it, it, it or, and then when he does sit down, he'll draw it. You're like, well, how'd you, how'd you do that so quick? It's not, like, it looks like a work of art, but, <laughs> and, and to your stuff and, you know, but, but so the writer's block, certainly I could imagine how much goes into, you know, trying to find that inspiration. But what I love uh, is I, I'm a big, um, you know, quote, person with my older guys and right. bless you so uh, I'm, a, I'm a big uh i'm a big uh, quote guy with my older guy and i'm always like sending him text messages or writing little notes and what i love about your uh column is for my youngest oh, thank they, you. they really they're like my little their little abilities to send a message yep. in, a, in a fun way like the, i think you had the one I, I i post a lot i gave to him about the the mom asking him uh, to clean his room or something yeah. like that, right? And then yeah. he goes in there and all, and, and the thing, it's just his gold equipment hung up and the rest of the room's yeah. still a disaster. Yeah. It's like, look, I, I'm done. I'm ready. I'm ready yeah. to go. I'm like, well, yeah. that's not what I meant by cleaning your room. Yeah. Um, you know, but I think it's like that kind of stuff where you can send these messages to the kids, uh, similar to Christie's books. And, you know, it's just that you can send these like, like underscored messages to the kids without, you know, really you know, driving it home in a, yeah. in a really fun way. And I think yeah. that's, you know, so I think it's universal. It's not Thank just you. for goaltenders. I think it's just for any child, right? That loves yeah. to be goofy. And I think, the, I think the last one I saw too was um, the one when they, they said the goalies are kind of understated and never, you know, never really vocal. And then he's like, unless I get a shutout, you know, like, oh, by the way, I don't, there's anything to tell me, <laughs> yeah. you know, about my shutout, you know, so yeah. it's, it, it is great. I love it. And, uh, you know, I think I would definitely recommend, you know, people just using it just for every day for their kids, just to kind of get, get a little chuckle. Thank you. You know, Jay, I got to let you know, uh, Mike's been holding out on us. He was quiet the whole time we produced in this episode. He didn't, he didn't contribute at all. He comes out today. Oh yeah. No, my, my whole family's illustrators. And, <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, don't, well, now, see, now we can't play this because my, I think my father will, uh, he'll be like, what are you talking about? You don't tell anybody about me. You I'm going to so directly <laughs> send this to your father. And there's, your there's, family. There's, there's probably, there's probably not, there's probably not a player uh, except for me uh that that have that has played for with me in my career that has doesn't have a caricature or a line drawing from him as a gift no, and i think that was like at the end of the year it was like his drawings were more important to the guys than any trophy any award yeah. it was like that because I, I mean i still got you know guys at 50 years old right now they're, they're the one thing they still have hanging in their house is his caricature and i'm yeah. sure you know that's the same way you're i mean he, he, i don't think he has any anybody with a tattoo of him yet but but i think that's that's pretty wild that that you know that that christy i'm sure has that that painting or that you know that work of art that she'll have forever and i think it's such a unique skill and the ability to find and you know the one thing too i could say is like when i see my father's artwork mm -hmm. no matter where it's stolen from and people using it and not mm -hmm. with permission yeah. i know it's his and yeah. that's so funny about yours like you see your artwork on a t-shirt that's not right. yours like you didn't do it but yeah. you know somebody stole that yeah. because it's yours. It's very distinct. Yeah. And it's funny how people can say, oh, somebody could just copy that. I go, no, nah, mm -hmm. you can't. It's not that easy. It's not as easy just to say, I'm going to draw like Jay. It's your unique drawing that's so yeah. uh, powerful, I think. Well, thank you. What's, what makes it so special. That also brings us to our weekly public service announcement, which is please don't steal other people's intellectual property. Ask for it, borrow it, or pay for it because it's their livelihood. Right. Oh, he just draws it. He, he's, he's an artist. It's like, you know, it's like a hockey right. coach. Like, you know, people don't yeah. value like, oh, hey, can you just give me seven hours of, of instruction? Yeah. But do you love doing this? Right. So so yeah. can you just do it for free? Just I'm do like, it for well, free. Yeah. What I do for a living, you know, so, no. so you, know, you wouldn't ask your mechanic to fix your car for nothing and then say, hey, I knew yeah. you were a mechanic. So I mean, you could try, you. Mike. It's not going yeah. to be. No, I do try. I do try. <laughs> I do try. Yeah. But no, but it's like. <laughs> I think I think it's a that's a great point. I mean, James is up. I see it. I see it all over the place. I mean, I see people in you know they'll use it on their letterhead for you know in different ranks or clinics or 
yeah. all kinds of stuff. And, you know, you do, you do ask, and, and I'm sure Jay's, uh, you know, I, I'm sure you're not one to uh, ask for a lot of copyright yeah. rules. Well, just ask. I um a lot of people have asked me say oh can we use this for a banner can we and I always say yes especially when it's for the children yeah, yeah. right I, I say just um include my website somewhere right the right. key is they ask so, yeah. yeah just a little little yeah you know, so they can see where they can find more of the cartoons the kids can go and discover them right no I have, yeah listen I don't think there's anything wrong with asking right like and, and to be fair most of the time when I get asked it you know I usually say yes it's just but asking is the bare minimum right um so Joe, I want to ask this question too because uh, I'm sure we have a lot of listeners uh out there that would be interested in this because you know I'm always amazed at how people's passion for the game can manifest itself in creative ways other than just playing right you know as I alluded to earlier in the episode there's a lot of ways to be involved in hockey without being on the ice. So my question for you is what advice would you give to someone that loves the game and wants to pursue a project or even a career, uh, you know, kind of like you have um, in, in the game in a creative way? Well, there's so many aspects of hockey and, you know, obviously we, we play it because we love it, but even when we're home, hockey transcends, you know, to our daily lives. Um, some people may want to get into like uh, retail you know, like maybe they want to sell hockey equipment, um, you know, which I've done too. And I've learned to, you know, um, shop and skates, which I love to do. I had a, a following. People would come and I get them done for them. But there's so many avenues. They may be very creative and they may want to develop a piece of equipment, make it better than it is now. And they can do something like that. If something calls to you from hockey, follow it because you just may be inventing the next great piece of equipment or a great new jersey or you may get into scouting, coaching. Um, I mean, there's so many avenues. A lot. I, love I love that you said follow it. You know, I, I remember um, probably in my mid-20s is when I really started to realize I'm, I'm not going to be an NHL superstar. Um, you know, and I, I believed that up until that point. Um, but I remember the day that I started realizing two things. Yeah. One is that I could apply the work ethic I had been putting into this game to everything, right? That that was not limited just to the game. That, that was actually a shock to me because I remember thinking like, well, I, I, I do this for hockey. This is hockey. It wasn't hockey. It was me, right? I, I, I'm capable of putting that level of work into anything as long as I'm motivated. That's what I should say, right? We all get lazy at times. And then two, along with that thought was the uh, firework explosion of all the things you can do to stay involved in the game. I could do broadcasting. I could do product yeah. development. I could do coaching. I could do everything you just said. Yeah. Um, and what I didn't realize until I got older is that, um, and this is through a lot of great mentors, my parents, uh, I wasn't afraid to try and just go for it. And I think so many people get to that point and they go, well, what's the point? I'm not going to ever be able to do anything with this. And they stop. They stop before they even move forward. You've yeah. been doing this comic strip since 1991. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You believe in it. And it, it, my, my advice to people listening uh, or parents, if it's your kids, um, is cultivate that belief. If they love the game that much, and I don't meet many hockey fans that don't love the game that much. They're very, very rare. Yeah. I'll meet someone that's like, yeah, it's okay. Um, you know, uh, you know, if they want to pursue a world in that, even if your kids are getting towards college age, you know, think, well, how can you study something that's going to allow you to be part of the game? Um, that saved me a lot of times going through tough times, knowing that, you know, I, I am focused on being involved in this game somehow. And that's my goal, right? I wasn't just like a nomad in the wilderness. Hockey was the goal and it opened up so many doors outside of hockey for me. Sure. Um, you know, but uh, again, I'm not trying to monologue here. Again, Christy and Mike, I don't know if you want to add on to that too. I mean, that, that's what I really want people to take that away from this episode, Jay, because because you embody it. You embody it. 1991. I won't I won't count how many years that is, but it's a while. All right. Yeah. All right. It's 30 for those of you counting. All right. But my point is that that's a that's dedication. That's longer than a hockey career. You know what yeah. I mean? So I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. The thing is, um, when I was playing down in Florida, um, I knew I had a story to tell, you know, in goaltending. And I didn't know exactly what direction it was going to go in. I thought maybe I'd write a book, which I am, by the way, writing a, a, a like a, a novel, a goalie novel, that's but awesome. that's going to take a couple of years to finish. But yes. <laughs> I knew there was a story there somewhere and I didn't know at the time, but it was my little small saves. And that was in 19, 
83, I think it was when, um, but I hadn't, he wasn't invented yet or anything. I just knew that there was something there. Right. And I right. just had to follow it. And I think that's eventually how I led up to him. And, and I want to guess that that passion to follow that was the same or similar passion to following the game. Oh, like yeah. playing the game. Like it feels yeah. very similar. I would say that. Yeah. It's, a, yeah. it's, um, you, know, you play and then you, you know, then you're creating something for it. And, right. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, Christy, did you have something? Sorry, I felt like I cut you off there a minute ago. No, I, I was kind of curious about Small Saves the character itself. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you get a lot of questions from your fans mm -hmm. about Small Saves. What are some of your favorite questions that you got about the little character? And what are some of the things that you think people would like to know about him outside of what they read uh, in, the, in the weekly strips? Yeah, well, it's funny. I think one of the biggest questions is why does he always wear his goalie mask? You know, he always tilts it to the side of his head and he never takes it off. And because he wants everyone in the world to know that he's a goalie. So that mask always stays on his head. You know, he'll tip it up and wear it sideways, um, but it never leaves him. Um, it's part of who he is. Someone said, well, kind of reminds a little bit of a young Phantom of the Opera because <laughs> he's kind of half covered. But I think the, the children asked me, well, what kind of hair does he have? You know, what kind of that hairstyle does he have? Um, you know, how does and he And what grow? color hair does he have? I want to know. I don't know. I never I never saw him without the mask. <laughs> it's really going to shock people when he's got the vanilla ice 1991 haircut. Oh, gosh, yeah. That hasn't changed in 30 years. Hopefully he's better than I'm, I am. <laughs> you know, I'm in the same boat as you, man. That's why I wear a hat on this show, okay? <laughs> Uh, my, Mike's doing it right. For those of you, Mike's got a beautiful head of lettuce. So I just have not. I can show you. I'm, I'm with you. It's all shiny up there. The oh, lights don't. Help. <laughs> no, that's that's a, those are great answers. And then even the, the interactions with the people that Small Saves meets, right? Are, are his teammates? Uh, because like you know, defenseman's one of the characters, right? There's there's some other yes. named characters. Uh, yes. Are those from? Are those based off of people you know or experiences that you've had? Most half of them are real people. They're yeah. like um, the defense with the, who always wears her sunglasses. Right. That's my dear friend, Jane. Um, she's a defense from New Hampshire. And uh, she always had a, like a wise crack for me. Um, you know, I remember the first time we, we played together and I came out of the net to clear the puck and she was going for it. And she's like, don't touch the puck when I'm coming in around the net, you know, and she always have like a little, little wise crack for me. So I developed it into a, her into a, a, a character. And, um, you know, and then the other one, I kind of based off a couple of people, um, the, the one with the, the kid occasionally, he's complaining and he's very, very dramatic. He throws himself on the ice and everything's like Shakespeare, you know, he's like, yeah, he we all know that player, by the yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> and some of them I just make up just for the cartoon for that particular use, but I find some of them. Are repeating and then i you know a lot of my friends like i said have have appeared in the cartoon i like could guest appearance just like uh was that me this week in the cartoon I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah that was you <laughs> Depends. what did i say about you right yeah <laughs> did you like it that's what you said if you yeah. liked it it's you yeah um you know another question i wanted to ask and uh, christy mm -hmm. actually sent me this you have a great quote uh and you, you said that anyone who plays the game is is a kid at heart we play because we love the game and we remember it from when we were young and we still enjoy it just as much. And that is so true. Just a hundred percent, you know, and every time I step on the ice to this day, I feel like a kid. Yeah. Um, it just seems to make everything better. You know, I know if I'm having a tough day or I'm starting to rage, if I get on the ice, it's, I'm going to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> so this is kind of a loaded question, but I think you're the right person to answer it. Okay. What do you love most about hockey? Being between the pipes and stopping pucks or doing my best to stop pucks. It's, to me, it's um, that creases home. That's uh, sometimes the world can be a little hard to figure out, but um, when you're in that net, everything makes sense. You know, I love that answer. Uh, you know, Mike, I don't know about you, but I'm getting Forrest Gump things like that is the greatest answer I have ever heard from a goalie. You are going to be a goalie someday, Private Gump. Um, no, you know, I, I remember one time I tried to explain it to somebody too, and and Mike and Christy, feel free to to, to chime in here. But I I said to somebody because chaos makes sense on the ice mm. and they, they didn't play and they didn't get what I was saying, but they said, it's chaos. I said, but it's the place where chaos makes sense. And I said, if you don't know, you're not going to know. I said, cause it is chaos out there, but it's beautiful. 
right? Mike, I want to, I want to turn to you, Mike, because I get that, that, that Mike, Mike, Mike coaches the chaos. Mike, Mike organizes the chaos. I, I try to try to avoid it as much as possible, but I think, I, I think Jay, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, any, anybody that loves the sport or any sport, but particularly I think hockey is one of those things where, you know, we're such a small community and then you have, then you have the goaltenders, which is a smaller community. Yeah. I think that, that small. ability to understand. And, you know, I, I, I probably don't fall into the, you know, I think all goalies are crazy analogy yeah. and they're nuts. And, and I think, but I, but I think they also have to be your most level people. Like they, they, you know, they, they, you know, you see a, a whole, you know, I'm sure even in adult league, right. That your composure and your ability in the pipes yeah. can dictate what the rest of your uh, teammates do. And I try to bring that, you know, I, I try to bring that philosophy to all the players that yeah. you know, watch your goaltenders, watch the great goaltenders. You know, you're going to have the guys that slam their sticks and break them over yeah. the net and, you know, they're going to lose their minds every now and then. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. you know, if you reacted like that for every single time oh, you got yeah. scored against, right. I mean, it'd be a pretty expensive sport. Yeah. So, but I think, I think it's just, you know, that, that, that levelness yeah. and the ability to, um, you know, let a goal go and then reset and be back in your crease again these are just great lessons for any kid that yeah. you're going to get scored against. Oh, sure. All the and time. you're probably, you know, when your team wins nine, eight, you're not going to get much credit, right? <laughs> but you're still going to, but that somebody has to stop the ninth goal. Yeah. So I think it's, I think it's just, uh, and if you, and if you win two to one, you're like, well, we won. Yeah. I played great, but I, but they're like, well, yeah, but the other guy scored the second scored goal. the game winning goal. Yeah. yeah. So said, <laughs> yeah well, what about that? What about all those saves? I mean, so I think it's such a unique uh, area for, for parents, you know, me, like I'm anti-goalie. Like I just plead and, 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 and beg my kids not to get in the net. And I tell coaches, don't let them go in the net. It's too stressful. It's too hard. You know, I can't handle it. Right. They can handle it. But, you know, so I think it's, uh, it's great that you're able to, you know, go in there, kind of love what you do. Uh, but also, you know, you have now another vehicle to express that love of the game and, and sending messages to kids. So it's cool. So, Jet, we should ask you, Mike, you just actually spawned this question. What would be your advice to parents who, whose kids are starting to think about potentially playing goal? And also for kids, because yes. I can tell you over the years, you know, Joe, both Joey and Sophia's teams, the goalies yeah. got so emotional. Um, yeah. Like they were carrying the weight of the entire game on their shoulders. Yeah. Um, and I think at, at times it was just, they didn't have the right perspective um, and they didn't see the fact that it takes a team to lose. It's not yeah. just the goalie. Um, yeah. So, it, so advice for kids too who feel like it's all my fault that we lost and they put so much pressure on themselves yeah. when they're goalies. Yeah. yeah. It's a team sport and it, they have to get past five players first to get to you. So, and if they beat you, well, that player that, you know, he, he went around everybody else and he got by you you know, he's a good player and, um, and uh, just don't take it to heart because there's so many games to be played in the future. Um, and when you're older and when you think, look back, you're not going to remember the wins, the losses. Um, you're going to remember the feeling of being out there. And, and if that feeling stays with you, you'll still be out there playing. Um, you know, there's a million games being played out there is you're always going to win and then you're always going to lose. And um, that's, that's why they call it a game. It's <laughs> a great answer, man. Like a lot of insight in that. Um, so I'm going to go to a couple kind of quick rapid fire ones here. Cause sure. every goalie I've ever met ever has a favorite goalie and they, they know who that person is. Oh, and yeah. they can tell me, so who's yours? Tony Esposito. <laughs> so, you know, just so the audience, N never have I had a goal. I'd be like, well, let me think about that for a yeah. minute. You know, this, this yeah, no, it's always boom. It's this guy, yeah. Tony Esposito, man. That's a great yeah. pick. But the funny thing is, as soon as I say Tony Esposito, I think of uh, Bill Dern and Ken Dryden, Jerry Cheevers, um, right. Rogi Vachon, and they all just, it's like a cassade. I mean, I could go on all, because they're basically, they're all my favorites, but Tony Esposito, it, it's a funny story. I was five, my parents said, and we were watching the hockey game, you know. They said I got off the couch and Tony Epposito was playing against Boston. I went up to the TV screen, I pointed to him and I said, that's me. And that's really cool. they said, they just were puzzled. And um, I, the next day I remember I, 
I got the couch cushions. I took them out of the the couch, cut them in half, got my father's dress belt, strapped them on me. <laughs> and I went outside. I was ringing people's doorbells saying, I'm a goalie. If you need a goalie, you know, I'm available. Just go to my house and get me. <laughs> I got in a lot of trouble for that, but um, it, he was the first one, you know, he was the, my favorite and uh, he inspired me instantly. Uh, first off, love that you cut the couch cushions in half. Yeah. Uh, that's an amazing story that absolutely paid off long term. And kids do not do that <laughs> yeah, at home. Yeah, yeah don't. Right? Oh my God, <laughs> you, need, you can go to Christie's uh, house if you want to cut the couch cushions in half. <laughs> um, that's amazing. Uh, too, you know, there is something unique about that era of goaltending, that 60s, yeah. 70s era. Uh, yeah. It really has never come back. I mean, this has nothing to do with today's goaltending, which is right. amazing. It's an amazing oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, deal today. But there's just something about, you know, the Bernie Perrant era, I always say I'm from Philadelphia. Yeah. You know, it's just, it was a different, different thing back then. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, again, we don't give those guys enough credit for the equipment they had or the lack of equipment that they had or the fact that they're using leather pads that get wet and get heavy. Oh, heavy. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, you know, and the, what was the, the deal? One of the goalies today said that the pads are twice as big and, and half, weigh half as much and then they wick the water off. I mean, yeah. Um, I don't think any position in sports has evolved as much as goaltending over the last 30 it years. It really has. The equipment yeah. has changed. Amazing. Um, people who know me though, um, my only gripe is a little bit, some of the modern, uh, the padding, the goalie leg pads, I have a little trouble adjusting to because I'm so used to an old school style pad. So I, I skate more with a more traditional goalie pad than, you know, but I do have a pair of um, today's type pads and they're nice, but I prefer the, a little more older style. right well, that's what you know and, yeah because i play old school i flop around and right I dive and, I love it. yeah yeah so you know what's cool about that jay i, I gotta tell our audience mike my, 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 i don't know i've never told you and christy this so i have a friend who's a stand-up goalie and he wears mm -hmm. the old pads he still mm -hmm. does and it's kind of his thing he's also like a civil war buff and he does war reenactments so there's right. a lot that goes into this but yeah. when he comes on the ice he's got a, a legit pull down face mask okay he's not a yeah. goalie helmet um old pads leather pads and I remember thinking to myself, man, we're going to kill this guy, right? And yeah. it's like, it's funny because uh, there are some shots like you wouldn't think, like sometimes if you make a big move and shoot on the ice, sure. it can be easy to score. But I know that from watching hockey in that era. But this guy, and I, I told my team, we played him last weekend. I said, yeah. don't sleep on him. I said, yeah. do not think that because he's a stand-up yeah. goalie, you're just going to be yeah. able to go by him. Oh, yeah. and, I, and I turned to the guys, I said, he will amaze you with the save this game. I said, yeah. I just know this guy. And and the guy's like, I can't reenact it, but they come out, he's kicking, he's paddling, sure. you know, I mean, and he's, he, he tracks the puck better than any normal goalie. I mean, you know, he's with his blocker and the guy's like, how is he doing this? I'm like, goalies didn't suck in the seventies guys, you know, yeah. like, they, like, I don't know what to say. It was a different yeah. style, but and he's, not, um, and he's not getting beat uh, short side, uh, you know, up top. I tell you yeah. that, I guarantee it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, my, my, my thing is, um, I mean, the goalies here are absolutely phenomenal, but they all drop in the butterfly oh. for every shot. Right. And, you know, if you're six foot five, I say stand up because you're going to cover more net. <laughs> right. You know, you know the, the funny thing about that style of goaltending um, before we like, get to the end of the show is just, you know, I, it's like you said, he doesn't drop at all. So what ends up happening is yeah. that, you know, guys will come in, they'll make four dekes and this really great move and they'll do all this stuff and they'll shoot and he's just there. The thing is, yeah. it it shows you that you know how some things have not translated. And again, the way the way you beat someone like that, no offense, Jay, is you know you, you got to move. You you have to move, and you got to yeah. get the puck low, and uh, you know make sure they're not there, or or uh, obviously get a get a two on one. But the thing is, you know the rebound control on stand up goalies is insane. Like you're not getting a good rebound off these. No, <laughs> no. you know the puck's going to the, the far boards and stuff like that. Anyway, that's. A little nostalgia. You know, the, the, the last question I wanted to ask is, you know, when you sent me some stuff, mm -hmm. I think one of the misconceptions of artists uh, is that, okay, you just do small saves. And as you alluded to here, it's not true. You, you said you're writing a novel. Uh, you've sent me other artwork that looks nothing like small saves. You've sent yeah. me a portrait. So, you. you know, uh, what are the projects do you have coming? Uh, can we get a sneak peek into that? Sure. Can we talk about that? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, I'm always doing freelance on the side. Some say, can you draw my, my, my son playing goalie or, or you know, as a or forward or, or whatnot, or my pet, whatever, you know, it's absolutely. Um, but I'm working with a, a fellow writer, her name's KP Lynn out of Chicago, and, and she writes the, um, the st storybooks um, 
um, hockey puck and hockey stick. And we're collaborating with a, um, a comic strip called Mixed Crayons. And that came about when I worked uh, for the city of Boston in the community center. We had children from all nationalities, backgrounds, abilities, disabilities. And I kept my notebook with me and I said, there's, there's something here. And so now we're doing a comic strip. Um, you know, children, you know, all backgrounds. Um, and we're putting it together. We're, we're make, we made like a story that we're going to make into a, a little book of it and, um, and then show it around, show it around to different like uh, syndicates and, and uh, publishers and, and maybe some will find it interesting. So um, that's something I'm really, I'm, I'm really enjoying doing right now. And, and but of course, small saves. I make sure he's he's drawn every week. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Like, again, for those of you listening, smallsaves.com. I would uh, I would say to all of our listeners, especially the parents, this is a a, a great uh, comic strip. It's a great little gift. Um, it's great something you can share with your kids that um, is it makes the game fun, right? Uh, and you you get to explain to them why the goalies thinking the way they are. Uh, dare I say it's a it's a good thing for goalies to probably be reading. If you have a little goalie at home, this is the comic strip for you. Um, Thank you. Before I close it out, Christy and Mike, I want to see if you had any last thoughts or, or Jay, Just you as Jay, well. Yeah, yeah, Jay, thank you so much for, you know, sharing small saves with the world. Um, thank you. He is so fun and it just lightens up the mood. Every time I read <laughs> your little comic strip, it just, it, it just kind of makes you realize not to take everything so seriously in life too, just to have some fun. Thank you. Yeah. I am. Um, Enjoyed, I enjoyed your article, by the way. It was great about wearing the C and how the kids oh. had a, a chance to wear the C to see what it was like to be the captain. Love the story. And, and I love the artwork that goes with it. It's great. Great art. It's, it's um, really wonderful. Well, Chris, you, Christy is a very that. good writer. Obviously. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, Jay, I got to tell you, I appreciate you uncovering that uh, Mike has also had a background in writing because we're totally going to lean on that now on every episode. Awesome. Mike, <laughs> what else are you holding out? Yeah. <laughs> well, other than the fact that I played goalie growing up, uh, you know, other than that, <laughs> you know, I, yeah. I, that's why I, I switched to, I used to love playing goalie in one game and then, I, then I'd be a forward and an X. And it was like, you know, those good old days of the old Cooper pads, you know, you feel like, oh my God, you know, I'm, I'm as light as a feather out here right now. You know, it's, a, it's amazing what that, uh, you know, that, that feeling is when you had that heavy, you know, yeah, yeah. cotton equipment that you had to wear, you know, I, I mean, yeah, yeah. but no, I, I would definitely recommend, I mean, just as much as you need the puck hog uh, at the bedside of your, you know, yeah. six and seven year olds, you, you, you definitely need a, a good comic strip to go along with it. And I think the, uh, the, the small save stuff is great, uh, you know, for, you. for, you know, connecting with your kids and, having an opportunity anytime to read about hockey is, is always a good, good way to end the evening. Totally agree. Well, I think that's going to do it for the episode, Jay. Again, thank you so much for being well, here. You've been thank a great you for guest. inviting me. I had a blast. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. And, and uh, for Sedona, Jay, Christy, yes. Mike, and myself, <laughs> ah, yes. and another great episode of uh, Our Kids Play Hockey. You can check yeah. this episode and more <laughs> at ourkidsplayhockey.com. And once again, you can listen to the episodes wherever podcasts can be heard. Or if you want to watch it, which this is an episode I suggest you watch because <laughs> everything that happened, you can check that out on Facebook, YouTube, yeah. or again, Our Kids Play Hockey dot com uh once again really fun episode we're enjoying all these interviews thank you for listening or watching and being part of our little community here we'll see you next time on our kids play hockey have a great day everybody